You've probably seen my other video where I think I used uh, Fix-It Sticks, the Torque Stick, my Digital, and my Effetto Mariposa. And it was a good start, but clearly I was missing out a bunch of other torque wrenches or torque screwdrivers. And there were some great suggestions in the comments as far as ones that I should give a try. So I went out and bought them all. So I now have purchased nine different torque wrenches or torque screwdrivers. And I just thought I would go through, you know, kind of just a quick synopsis of what I like and didn't like about each one. Now, let me just preface by saying I am not assembling the space station. I'm not trying to put a lander on Mars. I am looking to repeatably put my action screws in and set my scope rings and a few other things. To that effect, any of these will do the job and they will all do them more effectively than trying to guess with your hand. Yes, I know there are some of you out there who are consummate professionals when it comes to hand torquing and hand tightening because it's what you do for a living and I, I do appreciate that there are a handful of you that don't need an actual torque wrench. However, I am not one of those guys. So I need something that helps me repeatably and reliably set my torque on action screws and scope rings and scope bases. So what I'm gonna do is go through them. I am going to bolt down this piece of wood that has a, a hex head in it. I'm going to use just a standard half inch hex driver which would replicate a scope base uh, socket. I'll have that down on the bench. I will cover how much each one costs and what the torque ranges are. Uh, there are also some of them that come with certificates and some that don't. So I will definitely cover that because while I do trust any of them for what I need to do, I understand that certificates are important uh, for different occupations or different purposes. So with further ado, let me get started with our first torque wrench. Up first is the Nico Tools. Now, by all accounts, this is the exact same unit that Mac Tools used to have branded with their name. Uh, I've seen them for sale with the Mac logo on them. Uh, I do know that Mac Tools now has a, a more modern version, if you will. Uh, but, you know, this is a perfectly competent torque screwdriver. It has your window where you can read your torque settings, uh, a universal bit that is on a bit of a, it's not a swivel, but it wobbles a little bit, so it centers up pretty well. Here's what I really don't like about it, though. It's one of these, similar to the, um, the Wheeler Fat Wrench, you have to pull and twist as your setting and there are no incremental numbers. So I have no idea where I am, you know, between 10 and 20 and, um, you know, you're, you're kind of guessing in there and the higher you go in torque, the harder it is to pull and turn, which, you know, my hands hurt. Um, I don't love doing this, even just for this demo here. Uh, this one runs about a hundred bucks. The torque settings go from 10 to 50 inch pounds, covering anything that you would need in the gunsmithing world more or less. So, um, you know, good range, good visibility. Uh, don't love the torque setting and I don't like not having the incremental. So let's hear what it sounds like and how it works. I've got my bolt. The board is uh, clamped down. You can see that the standard bit just goes in. There's a bit of a spring clip inside that's holding my bit. So it's not going to fall out. And let's listen. I have a lapel mic on. So any of these that you hear, it's going to be what I'm hearing as the user because the mic is close uh, up near my head. So really good positive click and it's a good positive spin, meaning I'm not going to easily be over torquing uh, this bolt or any, you know, any screw that I'm using. So I do like that aspect of it. But again, I don't like not having the incremental numbers and I don't like having to pull and twist at the same time under heavy pressure. So that's the Nico tools. Let's see what's up next. Up next, we have the Weeha. And the Weeha is actually a pretty cool little unit. Uh, I was, well, honestly, I was more excited before I got it, but it's a really great looking unit. It looks like it has a very small form factor. It's a quirky little unit though, in terms of how you use it. Uh, it is one of the few that did come with a certificate. So it does have a certification for its torque settings, which is great. But here's how the Weeha works. First off, you have to have uh, this, which comes with it. It goes inside and then you simply turn and there's a little window here that you can read uh, and it goes every two inch pounds. And this one will go from 10 to 50 inch pounds as well. It runs about $140, but here's the kicker with the Weeha. 
It comes from the factory in, in the packaging with a 1 8 bit socket extension. So you have to spend another $15 on the quarter inch adapter uh, in order to use you know, all the normal bits that you would want. So with the Weeha, you use one tool to set it. Then when you're ready to use it, you take this, it clips in, and now you can put in your, uh, your bits. So let me go ahead and set this on a lower setting so you can hear it. So we're going to, now I will say the window is, is really tough to read. Um, I've got really good vision and, and I struggle even under perfect light to read these numbers. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're legible, but if you're in a hurry, you're out of range, you know, something's happening during a match, it's not going to be the fastest thing for a lot of guys to be able to read, especially if your vision's not great. So I'm just going to set it down here on about 10. Now we put this in and we're going to put our socket in. Again, this one's got the uh, clip on the outside with a little bit of a ball bearing hold. So it holds in the bits nicely. And let's see what this one sounds like. You can definitely feel it and you can definitely hear it. Uh, it's not quite as loud as the last one, but it's definitely audible. And it does the exact same thing, prevents you from over torquing easily. So I like it. it. It really is a great unit. Here's here's what I don't like about it though. I don't like how small the printing is here. And I really don't like having to have all these separate pieces, um, especially this one in order to set it because this is useless without this tool. So if this gets lost somehow, I have to order another one. Then I have to worry about keeping track of this. So one of these has to stay, like presumably this would stay clipped in. You would leave this in your bag and swap it out. Uh, but you still have multiple pieces that you have to account for. And um, again, it's just having the second piece to set it. But it is an easy to use unit. Uh, it's very audible. It has a good feel to it. It's got a good heft to it. Uh, and that's the Weeha. Uh, like I said, 10 to 50 range, about 140 plus 15 for the adapter. Definitely one of the more expensive uh, that I'll be looking at today. All right, let's look at the Real Avid. Now, the Real Avid comes in, uh, you know, good retail packaging here. Uh, it's, uh, you know, I think if you're somebody who doesn't know anything about torque wrenches and you're at a gun store or a sporting goods store and you see it, it definitely is going to sell itself uh, very easily uh, and it helps explain what's going on with it. But aside from that, let's look at what it really does. It, it comes in a really nice little package here. Uh, it is a little bit larger, so it's going to be more on the order of a case similar to like the Wheeler Fat Wrench. Uh, you know, it may not be travel ready for a lot of guys who are trying to keep the form factor down, but you know, again, that's not really what they designed it for. It's got a little pouch over here. You can put some extra tools in it. It's got a little space down here. So for instance, it doesn't come with, uh, the socket adapter for my, my base. I could always put that in there. So there is, you know, a lot of thought put into the packaging. It does come with uh, a nice little block. This has a little bit of weight to it. So if you put it on a bench, it's not going to easily knock over, which I kind of liked. Uh, sometimes you end up with, you know, tool bit sets that aren't the easiest to use. It comes with two distinct pieces. One is the actual torque screwdriver and the other is this little helper hand. Now the helper hand can be used as its own screwdriver if you need to loosen something, whatever the case is. It can also be put on here so that when you are torquing, you can apply, especially under heavier pressure, a more constant uh, torque to it. And that's just how they design this. So you get both of these with this kit. Uh, this one here, uh, you are looking at uh, about 80 bucks for the whole kit. Uh, I've seen it on sale a little bit cheaper. Um, I don't know what the actual retail is, but the street price is around 80 bucks. It goes from 10 to 70. So that's going to be a big plus for a lot of guys who want something more than 50 inch pounds. Uh, there are some people who use bases that, uh, or action screws that might require 60 or 70 inch pounds. In that case, this is one of the few that's going to go that high. The actual usage of this is I, I like it a lot. It's got really nice little gripper fins on it here. So, um, you know, it's fatter. It kind of reminds me if you, if you do a lot of cooking, OXO tools, you know, they're very ergonomic. This is one of those tools that I'm not fighting with in my hand. It's got a really positive grip and these little rubberized fins really give it a good grip in my hand. The other thing I love about it is that there's nothing to the operation other than turning the back of this. 
okay? So, I mean, literally this is it to set the torque. It's not under any pressure. The heavier I go, it doesn't get noticeably heavier to turn, which I really appreciate. And it has incremental numbers for me. So I can easily start back here and be on zero, which I know is um, 10. And then I can just say, okay, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. My only hang up with this one from a usability standpoint is that this window is really hard to see. Uh, I am under really good LED lighting here. I can barely make out because of the glare on this plastic and the way their little white and red marker is. It is really tough for me to see. And, and again, I've got really good vision. Um, I don't use glasses. I, you know, I, I'm not saying that in a bad way. I'm just saying I, I don't have a problem seeing things and I have a problem seeing this one. So I don't love that. What I have learned as I've used this at the range is to simply start at zero, which I know is 10. So I back off till, till it can't go any further, sort of like a zero stop almost. And then I come forward to zero, which I know is the 10 mark. And then I can simply say, okay, you know, here's 18 for my scope rings and I can count up for my scope base or action screws. Um, it's a little, you know, it's a little cumbersome in that respect. I can, I can faintly make out the red line. So at least I know, okay, there's zero and I know the red line's near the 40. So I feel confident that's 40, then 41, 42, 43, 44, et cetera. I just wish this was a little easier to see because otherwise to me, this is a really great wrench. It does not include a certification, which I know people are going to ask about. Uh, but I would feel very confident using this. And I will tell you, this is probably one of my top favorites out of any of the ones that I used for any reasons. Now, traveling, I probably wouldn't use this case because it's way too big. So I would figure out something different just to keep this in. Um, I don't necessarily need these when I am out at a match. I would just need this. Uh, but uh, overall, they really give you a lot for the money. I, I would say for 80 bucks, this thing is a steal. So let's see how it actually performs. So let me, let's see, we're back down around 10. Okay, so let's take a listen here. Okay, good audible click. It has a really good feel and again, Yeah, really good audible click, really good feel when you're holding it. So even if I have multiple earmuffs, earplugs on and I can't hear the click, really solid feel on this one. Um, I really do like it. Uh, they also, the back of this is free spinning so that if you are in a situation, you can actually hold down like this and turn. Okay, so they've really thought about a lot of ways to help the user get the best leverage while maintaining proper torque, and, and I like that. So there is the real Avid. Uh, again, you're looking at about uh, 80 bucks, and it goes 10 to 70 inch pounds. Straight out of the biking world, we have our next one, which is the Effetto Mariposa. Uh, this is, I don't know, I'm really weird about form factor. To me, this is the coolest in my mind in terms of simplicity, design, form factor, everything about it, I absolutely love. Usability, it's got a couple little issues. So it does come in a really nice roll-up bag. Coming from the biking world, this is obviously meant to be as small as possible to keep on your bike while you're riding and to keep it light. It comes with a number of tools, including the only uh, torque wrench that comes with an actual extension as well, which. I do realize it's taboo in the uh, torque wrench world, but it comes with it. Uh, and it has just a simple twist on the back and it utilizes a clicking head when you've reached your torque. Here's what I don't love about it. You are trying to guess where you are at. Now it's an easy to read line. I have no problem seeing the line, but these numbers on the left are really small. This is one of the few that is in Newton meters because we are dealing with a bike uh, tool. Uh, effectively, you are looking at um, about, uh, well, one Newton meter to uh, eight Newton meters or about nine to 71 inch pounds. So it covers a very wide range. You just don't have any incremental numbering anywhere. So you have no idea if you're really on 12 or 15 or 20. You're, you're really guessing with this one, which just, man, I, I really wanted to love this one, but with no way to know exactly where you are, I can, I can deal with the Newton meters. Like that's fine. Um, but it's just kind of a bummer. So let's see what this one sounds like. Cause we are dealing with a different type of head. Okay. So go ahead and listen. 
So that's it. Now I can over torque with this one because it, it's just clicking. So right there, that's the torque and, and that's it. But once the torque is initiated, I can still continue tightening. So you have to be careful using this style of wrench and, and I'll make it a little louder just for, okay. So, so that's what it sounds like, but under actual usage, you can see it's a lot, it's a lot more dampened. So if you had double earmuffs on, uh, you had trouble hearing and you really have to go by the feel of this one, which, you know, you can definitely feel when it pops. You just have to be careful not to over tighten. So, um, great form factor. If you want the absolute smallest, this is one of the ones to go with. You just have to be accepting of some of its downsides. So, um, you know, you're looking at about 110 bucks but a very wide range of about nine to 71 inch pounds of torque. So that is the Affetto Mariposa. At the top of our list in terms of pricing, we have the Topeak Detorque. Now I've done a full review on this one by itself. I really, really like this wrench. However, as I've mentioned in other videos, the fact that it's battery driven uh, really uh, kind of reared its ugly head for me because having not used it for a little while, I went to use it found that my battery had corroded a little. Now, I do realize that there are some batteries that are more corrosive or less corrosive, but you're still dealing with electronics. And I guess it was sort of a gut check for me that while I am a huge electronics fan in my uh, reloading area, at a match, on the range, you know, when everything's on the line, digital may not be the first thing I wanna reach for because if something fails, uh, I may not have time or the ability to correct it. I want something that is fast, effective, and usable uh, when I need it. The way this one works is you set your torque. So we're gonna go ahead and just put it on, um, let's see here, we're gonna put it on about 12, give or take, you know, let's see, it says 11. So we're gonna do 11 inch pounds. Now this one you can switch between, I think, foot pounds, inch pounds, Newton meters and one other one, I can't remember. Uh, I've had this one quite a while. I don't remember if it came with a certification, but my other Topeak that is much uh, cheaper did come with a certification. So I can only assume that these did come with a certification. I just don't have it and can't tell you for sure. It does have uh, a small suite of tool bits that came with it and a really nice form factor carry case, which is one of the things I really loved about this thing. Uh, it is ratcheting. So you can hear that and it's switchable on the ratchet. And yes, I know you're not supposed to back off things with a torque wrench, but some of these um, have been built or at least designed so that people can do it if you need to. Um, you know, it just is what it is, right? So let's see what this one sounds like when we are using it. So this one is set to about the same light settings that the other ones were. Okay, so do you hear that? Right there, there's a beep. Now it's not really loud. In fact, you may not even be able to hear it through my lapel mic. And there is no uh, tactile feel to hitting your mark. So if you can't see the screen to see what your, what your torque is, and if you can't hear the beep, then this one isn't gonna do you a lot of good. If you are doing something under your gun, obviously the screen is on the downside, it doesn't help you. And if you can't hear it, you know, if you can't take off earmuffs or take out your plugs and earmuffs, you know, this one could pose a problem for you. You can easily, easily over torque a screw with this one uh, just by continuing with the, with the action. So, you know, while it's great for a lot of things, it definitely is not the one that is going to leave you feeling the most secure if you're worried about over torquing, uh, especially under um, strenuous circumstances like a match or something. So that is the Topeak Detorque Digital Wrench. Oh, and for what it's worth, this one here, uh, you are looking at, <laughs> believe it or not, nine inch pounds all the way up to 177 inch pounds. So it covers a massive range and it runs about 280 bucks. Up next is the CDI. So this is the CDI Torque Screwdriver. This is actually a snap-on product now. Uh, 
I don't know the history. All I know is that CDI at one point was on its own. It, it was then purchased or incorporated somehow into the Snap-on brands. If you call for service or, or anything like that, uh, you are actually calling Snap-on for help. Uh, I believe it is a separate division within Snap-on, but nevertheless part of the same company in some capacity. I really like this one. Uh, this one was, was nice. It comes with a certification. It comes with a nice little plastic carry box if, if that's important to you for protection. It's not overly complicated. The way this torque wrench works is you have a snap out bottom. So that pops out. You have incremental numbers around it. Obviously you have your dial here. There's a little yellow indicator. It is pretty easy to see. It is not perfect depending on the light. A lot of these suffer from glare with the plastic cover. And that only gets worse the more you use these and possibly scratch them up. So you have to really be cognizant of what's important to you in terms of being able to see these. Now, the way this is designed, it is one of the few that is easily replaceable for a plastic window because they do have this little cover that can be replaced. Uh, this one is definitely made more for the industrial world, a, a real world uh, working man's tool rather than just strictly like a, uh, marketed towards bikes or gunsmithing or something like that. Uh, but uh, I do know this one's popular in like the electronic fields and some other things like that. Uh, this one here, you are looking at five inch pounds to 40 inch pounds, which leaves it lacking a little bit on the torque. I really love this wrench. It's a triangular, uh, sort of a tri-grip, so it's easy to hold. It's a nice metal feel to it. The turning, uh, while it gets a little stiffer at the top end, is never difficult for me. And the fact that you've got your incremental numbering so you know exactly where you're at at all times makes life really nice. And then you can lock it in. There's no chance of accidentally screwing it up while you're torquing. Uh, you know, it, it uses uh, a magnet. So again, not going to fall out, uh, but there's no clip. And I think that makes for a nice operation. And one of the things to keep in mind as we look at all of these is that not every tool bit is made the same. I am using a very generic, as seen in most gunsmithing kits, uh, base. There are other tool kits, such as Chapman tool kits and things like that, that utilize a different style of base. Not every torque wrench or wrench or screwdriver or torque driver or anything like that is going to use every kind of hex bit universally. So that's something you just need to keep in mind. But uh, all of these will accommodate your standard hex bits. This one is magnetic, which I really like. It's easy to get the bits in and out. And we are going to go ahead and set this one down at, at 10 and incremental number zero. I can see the line at 10. It is ready to go. So let's see what this one sounds like. Now, tactily, I can tell you, you can feel a spring inside snapping. It's, it's a very tactile feel and very loud. I, I would say that's one of the loudest. And it feels great. I don't feel like I'm, I'm in any position of over torquing at this point. Really good feel on it. My only thing about this is that it maxes out at 40 inch pounds and I really need to get to at least 45 for my scope base. Here's what I will tell you. If I go to 40 and then I keep turning incrementally and then I measure against like another torque wrench that goes higher, it technically goes to 45. I even got it up to 50 but I can't get a hold of CDI. I've left messages. I haven't gotten any calls back. Uh, I have no idea how safe on the wrench it is or how accurate it is, even though it technically goes above 40. I know the certification states 40, but in the real world, if I wanted to use it, I, I can't find out what, you know, what it'll do or won't do. So that's kind of a bummer. If this thing went 10 to 50 or five to 50 or whatever, um, I would say it is nearly perfect uh, for me. I love the design. I love the heft. I love how it feels. It's just um, a really nice wrench. So this one is, is again, one of my tops uh, without a doubt. And that is the CDI. And you are looking at about 130 some odd dollars, depending on where you get it. So again, five inch pounds to 40 inch pounds and about 130 bucks. Let's look at the Torque Stick. So this is another Topeak product straight out of the biking world. Really, all I can say is cute form factor, very small, easy to use, has this little magnetic um, bit holder so you can pick which one you want and pop it out. These are all held in magnetically. That snaps to this. Very easy to throw into a range bag. It is ratcheting, which I, I really like, and you can alternate the ratcheting. 
Uh, it has a very easy to read bar here, so I can easily see where I'm at. It also does mostly incremental. So I can be at, um, you know, let's say I go back to, again, this one's Newton meters, but let's say I go back to two. I can get a hard stop on two and and then I can make some incremental stops. They aren't labeled, but they appear to work. And this is going to be at a half mark. So this is, uh, this goes from two, now it's at three. And then if we make another full rotation, we're at four. So it's one full rotation. And then these are kind of like quarter marks around it. So you can get close. Uh, uh, Torque wise, it goes from 18, uh, just under 18 inch pounds up to 71 inch pounds. So it covers a wide range. You just aren't going to get precise. You're not going to get 21, 22, 23, 24. Uh, you know, it's more like you're going to get, you know, 22, five, uh, 25, 27, five, and then, you know, something like that. So uh, it, it moves its way through reliably, just not in a small gradation. Uh, I like the little form factor. As others pointed out, it has little fingerprints on where you should put it, which, you know, I'm an idiot. I didn't do that on the last video. So, you know, bad on me. Uh, let's see how this one works. Now, this one's another snapping one. Uh, so we're going to hear that. Let me get this set down at its lowest, which is, again, going to be uh, around 17.7. Here we go. So almost no audible click and very little tactile feel. Now using it, I, I enjoyed using it when I was testing it because it's small. I can feel when it snaps, but there is again, nothing that prevents it from over torquing here. So it just makes a little pop. Uh, if I do it, like you can hear it more like this when you're playing with it. But when you're actually torquing something, there's virtually no noise and it's not that hard for me to keep driving this bolt down into the wood. So just something to consider. But if you're looking for tiny, out of the way, you know, again, these bike ones are pretty tough to beat. So that is the uh, Topeak Torque Stick and uh, you're looking at uh, roughly a hundred bucks for that one. So there you go. Let's look at the next one. Let's take a look at the uh, fix-it sticks. So the fix-it sticks are pretty popular in the shooting world. We've talked about these before. I've had the all-in-one torque limiter, which I did a video on quite a while ago. It worked okay. Um, I think I was more excited at the time, but after using it for a while, it's just tough because you have to manually look at where you're lining up your torque settings. Uh, that's not always easy to do when you're on a gun and um, there was no sound, you could easily over torque. Uh, so it's good, it just didn't meet my particular needs at the time. So I have now ordered one of their uh, two piece kits. You can order, there's a couple different ways to do it, but this one comes with two torque limiters of your choosing. So I happen to pick the 15 inch pound torque limiter and I have, I believe the 45 inch pound torque limiter. Now additional torque limiters can be purchased. I think they're about 40 bucks. It does come in a very nice, easy to carry kit. They definitely think about, you know, again, this came from the biking world originally, but they do really think about the, the form factor and the ease of carry. This can go into a range bag uh, almost easier than just about any of them for the amount of stuff that you're holding. You get all of these bits. You also get the half inch driver, uh, which is, you know, really critical for scope bases. And, and I'm trying to think, I, I can only think of one other kit that I haven't reviewed yet that you're gonna see that comes with a half inch, the Vortex. So the Vortex and the Fix-It Sticks are the only ones that come with the actual half inch driver with them. So I really like this. It's, it's a simple kit. They do have a little free spinning uh, piece that you can hold that helps you torque on things. You can get different, different leverage for loosening or tightening things. Uh, it's easy to carry, like I said. My downside with this is that I don't like having to buy additional limiters for known uh, torques. So sure, 15 and 45 meet my needs for my current base, my current rings, my current action screws, stuff like that. Uh, but the reality is, what if I change? What if I need something that's 22 inch pounds or 60 inch pounds? I gotta spend another 40 bucks. You know, so that's the downside. Now you can get a larger kit. They do make a, um, I think a three piece and they make a, like a five piece or something. This one here, as you're looking at it, is about 112 bucks for the two that you get to choose. They're really cool about letting you pick any that you want. 
Uh, I think there are a lot of set combinations that are on the website, but you can actually put a note in your purchase or email them and say, hey, um, you know, I really need this combination and they're happy to accommodate. So they're really good people to work with in that sense. They make a little Velcro pad that's magnetic to hold your bits on the outside if you want, and it is Molly strap compatible. So again, they've kind of thought about everything in terms of the gun world. Let's take a look at how it works in the real world. So this is my 15 inch pound. Um, you know, nice and magnetic if you haven't used one of these. It's not gonna shake out, very positive feel. Um, you know, overall, I'm a big fan of some of the stuff that they do. Let's see how this feels. So you can barely hear it. It's a very light click. And then what happens is this is free spinning afterwards. So if you can hear that click and I'll try to get a little bit closer. Okay, so it has, it has a very slight audible click, but then this little blue piece free spins under the rest of it. And if, if you're actually watching the, uh, the socket, you can see that it's not moving. This is free spinning, which is how it's um, preventing you from applying additional torque. So that's what makes these individual torque limiters a little nicer than the all-in-one limiter, in my opinion. Uh, I know there's applications for both. But I do like knowing that you're going to have a tough time over torquing with this particular one. So, uh, like I said, you're looking at uh, about 112 bucks for this particular kit. Uh, I do feel like it. It comes with, you know, when you look at the bits, it's got pretty much everything. I, in fact, I think I, I didn't have to touch any of my other kits with this one when I was messing around with action screws, scope bases, and uh, stuff like that. So, um, you know, you can pick your limiters. I think they have gosh, a dozen or 15 different torque limiters at least that you can choose from. So that is the Fix-It Sticks kit. Rounding out our torque wrench, torque screwdriver uh, get together here is the Vortex. Now, I'm pretty sure the Vortex is a private labeled uh, wrench because I've seen this style um, other places. That doesn't bother me at all. Um, in fact, I would almost rather that they took a great design and put their name on it than try to reinvent the wheel uh, and do it wrong. So uh, I'm okay with that. Uh, it goes 10 to 50 inch pounds. You're looking at uh, give or take 90 bucks. I've seen it maybe five or 10 bucks cheaper on sale sometimes, but you're looking around 90 bucks uh, depending on where you buy it. It is a really cool tool. It, it is in my top three. It came, it came in a nice little, um, one of these plastic threaded cases that you have to screw up and down. Uh, you know, people have a real love hate with these cases. I happen to like them. I think they're very secure. It's a really heavy plastic that's going to protect it. It also comes with a certification. So uh, for being under a hundred bucks and coming with a certification, I think that's a big plus. Uh, 10 to 50 inch pounds covers, again, the range of anything I would wanna do. And it comes with a really good assortment Again, these guys handpick the tools that you will need to be successful with your gun. Obviously, you can add more if you like, but it does come with uh, two different uh, quarter-inch drives that work with the half-inch socket that comes with it. So they are, again, one of the only two that come with a half-inch socket. It comes with hollow ground uh, flat bits. It comes with you know some hex, some stars, you know torques. A uh, lot of good tools in there for what you need to get things done. The way that the Vortex works is a little unique. So the way you adjust this one, you have your course adjustment here for numbers or course you know, labeling, and then you have your incremental numbering around the collar here. It is locked in place. You cannot adjust this. So you pull down and then you just turn. As somebody with bad hands, I found this one to be really simple because it, it didn't require a lot of motion or grip strength uh, to accomplish what I needed to do. So if I wanna be at 10, I simply go to 10 incremental zero, and now I can be at 11, 12, 13, 14, all the way up 18 if I need it for my rings, which is what I want. And then if I need to get up to 45, I can quickly get up to uh, zero. So there's 40 and then zero, and then just move my way up to 45. So it's very simple to use. And I like that it locks in place. So there's no way that you're going to accidentally move your torque setting. It uses a little ball bearing uh, spring clip to hold in your bits. Okay, very popular. You see a lot of them like that. And I'm going to take this back down to about 10 where we've been testing everything else. See how easy that was? 
And now let's see what this one sounds like. Really good audible, really clean snap to it. So whereas the CDI, which I really liked, it had a very springy feel inside. This one, it's a very, like, it's a very crisp, you know, snap. So pop, pop. And, and you would have absolutely no trouble discerning that you were at that point uh, right there. I do know that the way this one's designed, even though they don't sell it with it, there is an accessory T handle that can go into the back. There's a... Um, quarter inch drive back here so you can see this fits into the back and you can apply additional leverage if you needed to I can't imagine really needing to even up to 50 inch pounds but uh, it is something that I have seen where it's almost like a t-handle that plugs in or you could use uh, some other small adjustment on it so uh, the vortex you're looking like I said about 90 bucks I think it is Again, hands down a bargain. Uh, when you're looking at something sub hundred dollars, this and the uh, Real Avid are really the standouts. But this one comes with the certification. Uh, you know, this one prevents you from moving it. The Real Avid, while I love it, there's nothing that stops you from turning the handle accidentally. So, you know, if we're just nitpicking here, the fact that this one can lock into place, uh, you know, gives it just a little bonus. Very tactile, rubberized grip, easy for me to use. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm a big fan of it. So, you know, I know the question is, well, which one are you keeping? Which one are you going to use? The truth is, I don't know yet. Um, I'm going to keep taking these to the range with me. Uh, I can tell you that it will probably be either the Vortex, the Real Avid, uh, or the CDI. But the CDI, again, has the limiting on it. The Real Avid, it's a size issue for me. The Vortex, if I'm just on a cursory, you know, kind of snap judgment, uh, the Vortex probably will be the winner. Uh, but you know, time will tell as I play with these a little bit more. So when I finally get uh, a winner in my bag, I'll probably do a follow-up video just to let you know what pushed one or the other over the edge for me. You know, the fix-it sticks are still in there too. It's just the cost of buying additional torque limiters that throws me off on that one and the lack of certification. So, you know, there's things to love and hate about a lot of these. I'm not really, you know, I really shouldn't say that I love or hate them because what I like or don't like about it may be totally different than what your use is or what you prefer in a torque wrench or torque screwdriver. But hopefully I've outlined enough of this that you can make a decision to uh, buy one and give one a try if you think it'll meet your needs. So I appreciate you coming along with me. Hopes it helps you guys out and we will talk later. Have a good one.